Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, it's pretty much out with the cold, in with the warm. I've taken just about all the cool weather crops out of my garden. I'm putting in the warm weather crops now. So let's go inside. We'll do a full tour. Things are growing really rapidly. Once that soil temperature starts getting into the 60s, staying in the 60s, you start getting 60, 70 degree nights, 70 to 80 degree days, your warm weather crops can almost double week to week. The peas are still in. You can see them from this side. We had um, tornado warnings a couple days ago. So these are uh, purple peas, purple potted peas. They were actually, we'll be in there, but they were almost seven feet tall. The wind came and blew them over, but they're doing fine. The peas are all starting to produce, which is great. We just got too hot here. Last week we were in the 90s for several days. That warm weather is coming back today. It's going to be like 82. So when it starts getting warm, most of your cool weather crops start flowering, producing seed. Their flavor changes, their structure changes. Um, for instance, radishes become kind of spicy and hot. They can get kind of pithy and be somewhat hollow inside. They're just not delicious. Update on the potatoes, doing extremely well in these fabric pots. These are root pouches, I do sell those. Still waiting to get my sweet potato bed set up. That's okay because they love the warm weather. So letting everything just warm up is only gonna help your sweet potatoes. And then these are more potatoes in my no dig garden. I'm in Maryland zone seven. So it's almost June 1st. The warm weather is here. And I think I probably kind of perpetuated, you know, rushing out peppers and tomatoes early so that you get bigger plants and earlier production. And that is true when you have uh, growing zones that have shorter warm seasons. Here in Maryland we have a lot so every year I'm thinking you know what I don't need to rush these plants out. As soon as your temperatures, your soil temperatures as I was saying get into the 60s, 70s, the days are getting into the 70s and 80s, those tomato plants, those pepper plants, your warm weather crops really really double triple in size in seven to ten days i want to stress that because you don't have to think you're behind right now because you didn't get your plants in if you just get them in now take care of them you're going to just see them really doubling in size i had a lot of cool crops in here all the spinach is out spinach is out those are uh, potatoes that are coming back that probably i left a potato behind over the winter here is a cherry tomato plant time to get it staked up it's starting, if you don't stake it, it's going to start curving and bending and stuff like that, and it's going to want to sprawl around. So i got to tie up some of the tomatoes that I did get out early. Pushing them out early is okay, but you do have to worry about frost. Sometimes it doesn't go as you, as you really planned, and the plants get damaged. These actually did okay. I have peas in here. They are starting to form the pods. I'll be harvesting those. I don't like the fact that that 90 degree temperature is is coming again because it's going to start harming you know the growth of my pea plants i kind of wanted you know cooler weather lasting a little bit longer purple potted they're just beautiful peas the pods are obviously purple and green the peas are green they're delicious and these are more of a shelling type pea they were, so this is, you know, where my shoulders are. These were all the way up to here. They were really beautiful until that wind came. Took out my, what was in there? Um, I hate not having a memory. Luckily, I have that. My arugula was right there. This is the pak choy. I decided not to collect arugula seeds because I have so many. I just wanted to show you. So this is the pak choy. This is what seed heads look like on kales, arugula, on radishes, um, pak choy obviously, but you can see that there are hundreds of them on here and this is going to give me thousands of seeds. You can collect seeds really easily by letting these cool crops go to seed. You just leave the pods on here and you can actually when they're this size, they're kind of tender, you can eat them. But leave them on here let them turn brown let them dry harvest them you can uh, swap seeds trade seeds sell seeds based on what you collect out of your garden and it's a really easy way to save money and also meet other people online 
trade, etc., etc. Some lettuce that's left. I don't know if it's going to really do much. I'm going to try and pick it this week, um, but I thought I would, I would keep that. And you can see over on this side, you know, some of the pea pods are just ready to go. I mean, there's hundreds of them. They're going to be absolutely delicious. I just hope the weather holds out and they don't stop flowering and producing because of the heat and actually humidity. And you can see on the leaf back there, there's a little bit of spotting. I'm going to show you and I can see it right in there. That's because it was rainy, hot, humid, just not the right temperatures for this time of year. I'm going to have a ton of potatoes. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Peas are looking good. Let me spin around this side and show you what I'm talking about. So with that three days of 90 degree temperatures, humidity and rains, I'm getting a lot of leaf disease on all kinds of different plants that I don't normally get. I'm not treating it. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I also feel like when the cool temperatures returned, the life cycle of this kind of died back and I'm not really worried that this is going to progress and take out the pea plant before the warm temperatures do. So I think things are going to be okay. Still working on those vertical towers. That was one goal of mine is to get them planted, but just ran out of time. Weeded a lot of the garden with the weed eater. Took out all the radishes in here. Spinach that was up there. All the space is starting to open up. I had kale. Um, just a green type and I have this purple kale. I'm saving this because I don't have any seeds for this. So I'm letting these grow and you can see the pods are starting to form on here. And this will be easily. Here's an example. It's a little bit better. It's going to be like 10,000 seeds, but I love this spinach. I love this kale. So that's what I'm going to I decided to collect. Purple and some of the pak choy. Things look pretty good. Let's go over here. So the kale that's covered, I talked about this. This is a tree canopy. Um, I'm not affiliated with the company, but it's from agfabric.com if you wanna you know, get something like this. These are just beautiful. I've been checking them. There's no bugs, no diseases, no issues. And I'll start harvesting this. The plants over here were meant to be picked when they were smaller. They're starting to get some white flies. I've been eating this really quickly. And one of the things I was thinking about is if you're getting too many insect problems, let's say on kales and you're getting white flies, you may be growing too much. I mean, you may be growing more than you need. You're not getting to it. You're not harvesting it in a gross way. And you're not eating, you know, the insects that are on there or washing them off before you eat them, hopefully. So sometimes it could be, you're just growing too much. You're not able to tend to it. You're not able to eat, eat it. And therefore the bug population kind of takes off. Lettuce that looks pretty good because it's protected once the sun goes over there by the kale. Butternut squash is starting to take off. If I look in here, I can see some leaf damage and stuff, but everything in here looks pretty good. I'm going to start spraying now because I'm not sure what's going on with these temperatures. Usually I wait longer. But I'll put an antifungal on here. Not sure which one I'm going to use. Maybe peppermint oil. I've never really needed that for the butternut. Um, that is acorn squash. I grew them here last year. They did really well. So I'm going to just do two vines here instead of four because I got crazy. And I think I have maybe just one over here. No, two. So I'll let two acorn squash grow up here. Beans were everywhere. Cleaned out the path with the weed eater. And this is what I think is kind of cool. So these are all green beans that self-seeded. So I just might do that every year. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to buy seeds. Um, they fell on their own. They started growing when they felt the temperature was right. And they look really, really good. You know, and they're vining really nicely. Same thing, they fell in here. I don't necessarily want the same green beans over here. This is where I think I had red yard long beans so I might pull these out and put something else in and I just don't need one two three four five six there's probably 12 plants in here so I have more than I need more peas 
So it'll be a huge harvest of peas over the next three or four days. Love the sunflower. They're starting to take off, self-seeded again. And again, they know the temperatures they like. And they're doing really well. Sometimes you think you have to wait till now to plant sunflowers because everyone says they love the warmth. Well, these, look how big they are. One there, one there, all self-seeded. We're able to take a little bit of a frost, some cold, and they're growing really well. So maybe in this case, you can plant sunflower seeds a little bit earlier than you think. I was worried about the turnips. They're all starting to form. I'm gonna start eating them now. In another part of the garden, I probably will start more of the purple tops. That's one crop I highly recommend because it seems to do really well. All the leaves are beat up. I'm not worrying about that. So this is another variety. Let's see. And they're starting to form too. That's a white variety. So if these do well and I get a nice um, turnip out of here, then I'll be growing both of them. Carrots are taking off. They're pr planted pretty closely together. They are shorter carrots. Carrots, carrots, beets look good. Remember this was the bed that was struggling. The replants are starting to get to a good size and they're going to catch these pretty fast. And that was one of the things I was talking about. The first wave of beets, kind of cold, maybe too damp. The seeds didn't do well. Many weeks, it was probably like at least what, four weeks, five weeks later, I planted seed. Most of them germinated. They're going to catch up in here. So I have two rabbits that are hanging around and if I leave the gate open they come in here so they ate some of the kohlrabi which is sad because I only have like six plants growing more beets everything is looking pretty good more peas tucked in there are my super hots those plants are a little bit beat up looks like they're getting eaten a little bit by snails but I did put down my um, slug baits snail baits and I think they're gonna be okay so this is the flower, um, I believe it's like Russian sage or wild Russian sage. It's beautiful, it smells good, smells like sage, love the flowers, brings in bees, brings in pollinators, and I just kind of let it do its thing. There's enough room, there's a bee, right on cue. Still enough room to get my wheelbarrow through. I will have to cut this back, but it is super hardy and it does really, really well there. Cucumbers are taking off, definitely time to start spraying them with the peppermint oil so that the spider mites don't start attaching to the lower leaves, working their ways, their way, you know, up the plant. More sunflowers. Onions are doing well. It has to, you know, they have to be weeded out. I'm pretty sure these are tomatillos. They grow crazy. They're very aggressive. I couldn't eat them. I was getting literally hundreds of tomatillos a week. So they fell, they rotted, and they're all coming back. I'm not even going to grow them this year. I didn't use them that much. Look how nice the pepper plants are doing in here. Nice and green, getting tall, growing into the cages. They're starting to flower. Let's go back over this way. Just did a video on this, redesigning that with the metal raised beds, getting the trellising set up. Probably going to put melons and other worm crops in there. Trying to keep my shadow out of the video. These are all the plants that I started without grow lights just by moving them outside during the day when it was, you know, in the 40s. Definitely not freezing, but in the 40s and I would bring them in at night. Perfectly fine. Nothing fancy with the grow lights. Tons of tomato plants and I got them all in. So these just went in. We're going to get to some tomato plants that went in maybe four weeks ago. They're bigger, but you know, if you watch this Friday morning ramblings, you're going to see how quickly they all grow. Still some cool crops on this side. They'll stay. The endive is starting to bolt. It's bitter anyway. So that will actually, I'm going to take all that out today. I don't, I just missed it. So I will eat that, but starting to open up the space. This is just a different angle. I don't know what I'll be dropping in here. I'm going to have to fix up the beds. These are potatoes that I didn't harvest. So they overwintered deep enough that they didn't get damaged when the ground froze. And now they look great. 
So this is the new perspective. This is what I was talking about for weeks. I finally got to it. So this is a whole new kind of perspective in my garden, which I like. Cleaned out this space. There was kale in there. I'm going to put cucumbers up this side. Not sure what I'm going to put here. May change the trellising. May change the trellising there. I just don't need it. Notice how I uh, left the hose out. That was a mistake. Um, garlic. It's been in here for probably three years. I just decided to pull it all out. Not, you know, perfect um, cloves or anything like that, but nice size. I will clean it up. I'm going to let it dry here for a couple of days before rain comes, and I will use that. But I wanted to get rid of all the garlic, all the weeds in here. That's a uh, green zucchini, yellow squash, one plant, one plant. That's what I did last year. Took up this whole space. Got more than I needed out of two plants. Usually I would tuck in a squash over there. I'm not going to do that. I just don't need the extra plants. So I can concentrate making sure that I put dust on the stem, keep it away from the flowers, insect dust, try and control the vine borer, inspect the leaves, and I can take care of these a lot better than kind of popping around trying to deal with six, seven, eight, nine, ten squash plants where sometimes the insects just, you know, get out of control because you're just human. You, you can't tend to all of this and not miss a potential problem. But with two plants, I'm going to get more than I need and I can probably keep these healthy. And I'll have my backup plants. I'll be talking about that. Something happens to one of these, new seed would go in the ground or my transplant will go in and that's going to catch up to, well, it won't catch up to the big plant, but it will really um, grow quickly because it's warm. It's going to start producing in really 30 to 40 days after germinating or being transplanted into the ground because they love that warmth. So matching the temperatures of the soil and the ambient temperature to your plants really makes a difference. Here are tomato plants that went in a while ago and they just look great. I've been pruning these. If you don't stake them early on they start flopping over and they can get bent and curled like this one so like I was saying it is time to they're getting a little wavy this one is being uh, pruned as two stems but it's time to get them supported so they grow upright I have tomatoes already and it's fun you know to get some of your tomatoes out early but it's a lot easier for me to put out maybe five plants than all 40 plants. So if a frost comes, it's a lot easier for me to just protect a handful of plants than an entire garden. And I'm equipped for that. You know, I have the different things that I use to protect these plants from frost. So that's another strategy, is if you're kind of pushing out plants, make sure you have containers that can go over them or you have a way to protect them from the frost and don't put out more plants than you can protect. So they're doing well. They've been in here, I don't know, maybe four weeks or so. Just put that guy in. That's from Freetown Farm. That's an Eva purple ball. In four weeks, it's going to be hard to tell that these plants were that much bigger than this plant because they kind of all equal out. The cherry tomatoes are going to be put in this weekend right in here. I'm going to try and stick with not overdoing it. Another cherry tomato in there. Let me show you the jalapenos. So this is the experiment. There's 25 in here, nice and green. Got to weed it out. I'm going to put my mulch down, maybe sprinkle some organic granular on here or something. But these are looking good. Dark green, growing well. There was one thing I saw over here. So let's see if I can find it. So some of the leaves are twisted right here, like right there that one um, in here. Not a big deal. When you look at the rest of the plants, it's not happening. Sometimes you get twisted or deformed leaves because aphids are chewing on the end. Temperatures fluctuate greatly and we've had 30 degree swings from day to night here. And that can damage your plants in the beginning. Just, you know, stay the course. If they look beat up, if they look yellow, go ahead and give them some fish emulsion or water soluble nitrogen. That's what you like to see. Let's see if I can get that in there. Ladybugs are coming out. You want to give the good insects a chance to kind of balance out 
taking care of problematic insects. So if I saw some aphids on here, I probably wouldn't spray right away. I'm going to let to see. I'm going to wait and see what nature does before I really get out the pesticides. When we get over to the eggplant, I have insect dust on those. They're not flowering, but the flea beetles were taking them over. And I know nothing here really takes care of the flea beetles, so I have to do that with insect dust. But I'm going to, you know, not overdo it because you don't want to kill off that little guy right in there. This was all spinach right in here. I cleared that all out. Back there are my sunflower seeds, the burgundy beans, all self-seeded. I've been thinning them back, keeping what I want. And you can see they're working their way very quickly right up the cattle panel. I want to show you just what I'm doing in here real quickly. That's a current plant, by the way. Different size sunflowers in here. They're doing pretty well. Luckily, the rabbits haven't found them. This is one of the burgundy beans. So I'm going to keep it. It just came up by itself right there. And as the sunflowers get taller, I'll weave it around. And eventually this is just gonna go up this whole mass of sunflowers right in here. So that should look pretty cool. Maybe I'll let a couple of these kind of blend right into the sunflowers. And this way I'll use, these, these are gonna be six, eight, 10, 12 foot sunflowers coming right up all the way through here. This way I'll let the uh, beans just trellis right up those. Towers look good. You can see a strawberry right there. Just keeping them watered, especially when the temperatures are kind of unseasonably getting into the 90s. These all have to be pulled out. I didn't even really get to eat these because I had so much in my garden. I do a lot of growing in here just for teaching purposes, but we didn't even get to that. So there's some decent spinach left here. You can see that the bottom tier is all dried out. These will be cleared out. And I'm trying to be able to kind of teach people how to grow in here, but I also don't want to grow something that I'm not going to use. And I'm doing pretty good at giving away a lot of stuff this year. The eggplant in here, originally I thought, you know, the plants are beat up by temperature, but something was messing with the root system, so I hope I don't have a problem in there. Anyway, they're dusted. Get rid of the flea beetles. If you can control flea beetles on eggplant, these will get giant. They're going to get this tall. They'll just have masses, mass amounts of um, eggplant on there. I don't know, was I just saying sunflower when I was talking about these? This section looks good. All the blackberries are starting to form. They already flowered. You know, as you know, I'm very happy the blueberry bushes have taken, um, have come back and are really just doing really well. So if we step in here, you can see the globe artichokes, the ginger's coming up, but here we go. So like when I'm just out and about, here's a weed. I just pull them out, throw them on the ground. I'll get to weeding this out better. This usually doesn't come until late June on my hops vines, but because of that warmth, humidity, rain, high temps, things are going a little bit crazy on the vines. I mean, you know, that's okay. What can you do? Tons of strawberries in there. We've been making smoothies with them. So things are doing well. The peppers in here are starting to take off. Two of them lost their tops. It looked like something chewed on them. So I will replace them. I'm not gonna wait around for them to, you know, come back or anything like that. I have other plants growing. I have backup plants. So don't be afraid to replace plants. This is what I've been eating a lot of the lettuce out. This was harvested once. This is the second harvest that's coming up from the romaine, which is pretty cool. And romaine seems to do a little bit better with the heat. These will all be gone this week. Shishita peppers look good. Extra plants in here that have to get out to the garden. You know, but generally speaking, everything that's a cool weather crop that enjoys the cooler weather, the colder weather is gone. And it's really time to get all your warm stuff out. You have time, I don't wanna panic you. You have time. And I'll just stress again, when the soil temperatures get to the right temps, 60s, 70s, and we're just talking about the top four inches, six inches, not down at depth. Down at depth, they stay pretty much stable. But that top four inches, your plants are gonna really take off. Let's go over to here because I just want to show you something I do every year. Every year I grow 
radishes in these flower boxes and I've been harvest, harvesting the radishes out of here. French breakfast, they're all ready to go and be pulled out. I waited a little bit too long. Some of the radishes are starting to bolt, so to speak, putting out flowers, want to produce seed. But just look, are all these little delicious radishes, I just ate some, they're just starting to get a little bit spicy because it's been so warm. But these are pretty much neglected right in this space and I'm able to kind of grow all these radishes. And some of these are planted right next to each other. But you can see that I just, you know, put them on a zigzag and there's nothing wrong with this. They're not as big as the ones in my garden because the space is smaller. But look, these two are right next to each other. Those are nice radishes. So don't be afraid to experiment. Try different things. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy your weekend. Take your time. Move at your own pace. You'll get to your garden tasks and chores. And I'm sure your garden's going to do really well. This is what I have left of some of my annuals that I've been growing. And you can see, I forgot to come out and check. Crazy rain two days ago. Let's dump that out. Get rid of the water. And you can see here, you know, they look great. These are potatoes, actually. Those are alpine strawberries. It took almost five weeks for them to germinate. And they're sitting in, you know, this mess, really. And they're starting to germinate. You just got to be patient with strawberries. Those are alpines. Here's another mess. All right, let's get rid of that. So, obviously, I'll come out here and take care of all of these. They were under there because I just wanted them to not be hit by the heat and get acclimated. They're good to go. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And those are sunflowers growing in the foil pans. You can do that. Get them started. They'll be going out throughout different parts of the garden. And again, thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And enjoy your weekend. Thanks for watching.